Hey there, everybody. I'm going to do some pouring. I've got four canvases that I want to do, all different techniques, but pretty much with the same colors. And there was someone in one of my Facebook groups who was questioning whether you could use enamels with your paint pouring. And I commented that I don't know why not. It's latex based, it's water based. I don't know why you couldn't use enamels for paint pouring. So I thought I would test out the theory with DecoArt patent leather high gloss paints. And they had shipped me some samples a while back and the only four that I got were the red, white, turquoise, and black and I wanted to add a primary yellow into that. So I just got their gloss enamel bright yellow, which should work about pretty much the same way. And I'm gonna empty these bottles into these cups and I'm gonna do a one-to-one -one ratio with Floetrol. I would use the pouring medium, but not everybody has access to the pouring medium yet. Some people have not been able to find it and I wanted to use Floetrol just to make sure it was uh, something that everybody uses and has access to um, as far as at least in the United States and people can use Oetrol in uh, the European area. So uh, I'm going to mix one to one ratio with Floetrol, which is also in my little yellow squeeze bottle, which I probably will not use, but I've got my big bottle. And it is Flood Floetrol latex based, which means water based. You cannot use oil based paint conditioner or thinners with water based paints or latex paints. So I just wanted to point that out. Got my gloves on and then I've got water in the bottle here with about 10% of Floetrol in this as well. It just helps everything mix up a little bit better that way. And I think I might do one pour without anything added to it. No silicone, no OGX, nothing. And then the other three, I'm going to use my OGX, which is what I love, 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 because it smells delicious and it produces such beautiful cells if you don't do a lot of stirring and if you put very little in. So this is a four ounce bottle and I've had it at least five months and I am still not halfway into my bottle. So it lasts forever. So even if you have to pay 10 or $11 on Amazon for it, it is well worth it because it's going to last you probably at least a half a year if you don't go overboard on using it too much because you don't, it takes very little to get great cells with OGX. This is coconut milk anti-breakage serum and not all coconut milk products are the same. This has dimethicone in it. It's the second item on the ingredients. So if you look at your hair ingredients and if it's got dimethicone in it, you're probably good to go. I'm going to work, be working with the 12 inch canvas too. So I'm going to empty these bottles and what you're going to see is when I totally get the paint out of the bottle, I'm going to squirt a little of my water Floetrol mixture into the bottle and that will just help rinse the paint out of that bottle and utilize it as much as possible mixed in with the paint. So I've not tried the patent leather paints before. Debbie Coles has done a video on YouTube where she did it with a, a pair of black high heel pumps and they looked really awesome and she coated them with the white and then she used the red and the blue on it and they were really adorable. So I know she's done a video with the patent leather paints but I don't know if anybody else has. I was going to see if I can let that just sit for a minute. Again, this one is not the patent leather paint, but it is a gloss enamel, so it's basically, I would think, the same kind of stuff. It might not adhere as well as the patent leather paint would, but, you know, we're talking about on a canvas, so you don't have to have a high, high ad adhesion factor because 
obviously patent leather, if you paint on patent leather, you need it to stick to it because it's a slick surface. So there might be some other factors in that patent leather paint that make it a little bit hardier. I'm not sure. So I'm basically just trying to let these kind of flow down in the bottle if at all possible. It's kind of hard to tilt your bottle on the cup. I guess I'll give up on that. But what I can do is I can put the lid on and turn it upside down for a minute. I have had some come out of this one, so that's a good thing. So I'll put these upside down and just drip black in the other cup. It's interesting, once, they, once you pour them out, it just kind of keeps pouring. That's the interesting part, is it doesn't stop like a regular bottle of paint. It just kind of keeps going. So when I get this black out of this other cup, I'll put the blue in there just in case I don't want the... Uh, now that one came out, I had not shaken it up very well. That's interesting. So there's blue and then there's all these ripples of paint coming out. So I just didn't mix the, uh, the color in with the product very well. It's stringy. That's very interesting. I've had these paints for a little while too, so I don't know if that's one of the reasons why that blue separated, probably. You know, every, every once in a while, it's just kind of the luck of the draw. You'll pick up a bottle of paint or something and you'll open it up and it'll be dried out inside or something funky. And that's probably pretty true across the board. For any paint company, there's just going to occasionally be one that dries on the shelf or, you know, whatever. So you just kind of have to take it with the, the odds. So like I said, I'm going to add a little water that has the Floetrol in it to each bottle just to help empty that paint out of the bottle. There's still more paint coming in this one. I just put me a piece of new butcher paper down. It always looks so pretty when it's just brand new, but then you always have to get paint on it and mess it up. And I could have actually added this after I put my flow trawl in, but either way, I'm going to add two ounces of flow trawl, so it's not going to really make that much difference. It's getting ready to storm again here. I think the last time I was filming it was raining really hard, but it, the sky is darkening up and it's looking very ominous. But I'm painting, so I'm a happy girl. So I don't know, I can't remember. I don't think I talked about the, uh, the show in Raleigh. I can't remember, but I had a great time. It was a young crowd. I was definitely the older, one of the oldest, if not the oldest ones showing there. And um, so it was quite a young crowd. And most of the people that probably were there were probably people that were supporters of the artist. And there was over 50 artists. And um, but there was music and fashion and hair and makeup and jewelry and wood carving and all kinds of neat stuff. And um, so there was a lot of really awesome talent. And because people had paid $22 for the tickets to get in the door and $7 for parking, they almost paid $30 to come to this venue just to support their art friends. That's why I decided to bump my prices way down on my canvases. So the 12 inch canvases normally that I would sell on my website for well over $100, I sold them for $30, but I sold over 10 of them. I sold some jewelry, um, some prints, and a clock. The green, the lime green clock that I have a video 
on and um, I made some good connections and I've already had one or two people that bought stuff from me at the event that tagged me on Facebook. We became friends on Facebook and I've already got a commission from one of their friends who saw my artwork because she posted my artwork on her page on Facebook. So it was kind of a great opportunity overall for everyone you know, to intermingle. Her daughter was the lady that posted a picture of the painting she bought from me. Her daughter was also an artist at the event who was probably maybe 20 years old. And um, so she was there supporting her daughter, but yet she came and bought a necklace and a canvas from me and now she actually wants two more small canvases that I had there that didn't sell and she decided she wanted those as well so I'm going to meet up with her and um, get those canvases to her but um, so it was one of her friends that actually asked me about painting her something so it's always great to make connections with people. It's not always about making the top dollar. It's more about connection with people. That's how you you build your following, your collectors, your client base, um, your friendships. To me, it's very important to connect with the people that I sell my art to and um, I've already sold several pieces and I just sold the piece that I've just posted called en Enchanted Garden. I just sold it today from one of my friends on YouTube and Facebook. She's a new friend of mine through YouTube but she bought a print of mine and now she wants this canvas that I just painted and so I am just like totally happy about that. I'll show you the painting. In case you haven't seen the video yet, I'll show you the painting before I start this pour. It's funny, the thing about white paint and Floetrol, you can't tell if it's mixed together or not, but you just got to keep stirring and making sure that it's really mixed well. And I'm going to speed through the rest of this really quick. So the turquoise <clears throat> is the patent leather paint, but I'm afraid that it's not deep enough. I'm going to add a little bit of their Ultra Blue Deep just to see if I can deepen the blue up just a little bit. I'm going to put in a little Prussian Blue as well. It's not enough to change the paint much composition wise, but hopefully it'll deepen that blue just ever so slightly. It's still not going to be a dark blue, like a primary blue, but it is helping. So the consistency of the paint is pretty perfect right now as is without adding any more water. I put some water in the bottles just to release the paint from the bottle so that I could empty out the paint in the bottles so they're totally empty. And I put enough water in that to where um, there's no more need to add any more water. That felt a little heavy, but I guess it's not. Okay, so I'm down to my final canvas that I've got these Deco Art patent leather colors. So this was my attempt to prove to you that you can use water-based or latex-based enamels. Uh, there's no reason why you can't do it, and you can get some nice, gorgeous cells. So I did a straight out pour with no OGX or silicone in it and it came out just kind of fluid looking and I did a comb through it so it looks very psychedelic 70s looking and then I did a dirty pour with big giant cells and then I just did a tree ring pour with the, the OGX in it and um, I wanted big cells so it doesn't look like a tree ring but I poured it kind of in that fashion just in an in a open larger ring. So this one I want to do a swipe with. So I've got probably a couple of ounces of red, yellow, and blue. A little bit more blue than the others. I've got plenty of black and I've got about the same amount of white. There is no OGX in the black or white. 
That's OGX Coconut Milk Anti-Breakage Serum. There is a difference between this and other coconut milk products. And this has dimethicone in the ingredients. It's maybe like the second one listed in the ingredients. And it takes very little of this to make big, beautiful cells. So in my blue, yellow, and red, which I had over four ounces of paint and, and Floetrol mixture, I put one drop. I didn't do a whole pump. I just did one drop in red, yellow, and blue. None in the black or white. So it takes very, very little. I have used this bottle. It's still over halfway full. I've used it for five or six months and I've still got plenty. So it lasts a long time. I can't get it locally. I live in a small town and my Walmart doesn't carry it. And I haven't looked at Target. I heard that somebody found it at Target. So you can check those places. But if you can't find it, order it on Amazon. It's in my link below my video. And it might be $11 or whatever, but it will last you at least six months and maybe longer than that. So that's my final thing that I'm going to do with these DecoArt patent leather paints is do a swipe. So I've got a damp paper towel and I've got a 12 inch canvas. So I only need two sections for the paper towel. I've got push pins on the bottom of my canvas. I think I'm going to go with the red first. Taking it over the edges. This patent leather paint is very rich and thick. It's very yummy feeling. So I'm going to leave a little bit in my cup just for touch-ups. But I'm basically using up the rest of this paint. This is the yellow. I'm going to swipe with black. And I'm just making sure that my colors go all the way down on the edges. You can also before you do your swipe, you can tilt it to the left or to the right and, you know, get it over your edges, but I just try to go ahead and pour it that way. Now I'm going to do the blue. Now the sun's coming in my window. I've got to close my blinds a little bit here. This is like way, 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 way too much paint that I'm pouring here. I'm just wanting to let you know it's more than plenty. Let me adjust the blinds here. And now I'm going to put some white down at the bottom. So these are all enamel paints. And we're trying an experiment here just to make sure that you can do pretty much any technique with enamel paints. And I'll take a little bit of this white with my finger and just bring it down a little bit to the bottom of the canvas just to make sure that it's totally covered, but all this paint is coming this way when I swipe. Get my, can my piece of paper towel ready. And so now this black, which has no silicone in it, or OGX, I'm using OGX with this. This paint is very thick and rich. Okay, so we're going to see how this does, the patent leather paint. Lay it down in the black. Let it go all the way down over the edge. And here I can come back and add some more black. For the light areas. And you can also, 
take your paper towel I'm not even going to do it but you can I'm not going to use this paper towel it's so covered with paint it's pretty rich with paint but you can take a paper towel and you can take it and dip it in your black that's on the table the spillover black just get it on the edge and then you can come over on the side and just touch it to the side of the canvas I'll turn it over and dip it in the black again and I'm doing this on the table, not on the canvas. I'm getting that extra black paint that's spilled over on the table. And then I'll touch over here just a little bit. I don't need much though. Look at these big cells. They're coming up on their own. Be patient with it. So I've made sure that all the black is totally covered. There's a little lump, I'm just pushing it off the canvas. But this really levels very well. It's very, um, it's very rich and creamy, that's for sure. And I think they offer it in multiple colors, um, like 10 or 12, I think. Uh, I'll look on the, when I post the colors below the video, I always post my colors that I use from a video. I always post them below the video. If you're using your laptop, you click view more and it'll show everything below the video. If you're on your cell phone, then you just click the down arrow and it will show you my Facebook link, my Amazon link with all the products. It always shows all the colors. I always list all the colors that I've used and that that area so make sure to look for it so I'm just gonna let this sit for 10 or 15 minutes and I'll be back while I'm waiting I'm gonna do a pour on a piece of poster board that is called dry erase board you can get it in the size of a poster and I got mine at Office Depot and it might be about two dollars but it's coated on both sides it's made to write on with dry erase markers but this is fabulous for doing skins on because it will peel off super easy and you can actually use both sides you could do a pour on here let it dry totally turn it over and use the other side so that's 72 pieces from one poster board that I can use skins from if I wanted to I'm not going to necessarily use both sides but you can so I'm going to take my colors that are left and just do a pour with what's left. And maybe I won't use black, I'll just use a little bit of white and the primary colors. So I've got a little bit in my cup. I'll stir it a time or two and that'll be it. Pour it on my poster board paper and this is also very sturdy it's not um, super flexible so there's that I'm just gonna let that dry the way it is here's one I did earlier from the cup and it had black in it so you see how it goes darker with the black mixed in to where it's you know kind of almost brown looking so it's been maybe five minutes and there's some large cells there so I'm kind of waiting to see still what happens so while I'm waiting on this over here I've got this nice puddle of color and look at these drips here they all came off the end of the canvas
Can you see that? There's some reflection. But all those little drips from the end of the canvas that are really kind of pretty. So I may end up leaving those and um, letting them dry that way and then I can use them for jewelry. So some cool stuff going on there. And even in this drips that are in the blue. I'm not good at dips, but I'm going to try to do a dip with this. Not enough colors going on, I guess. I don't want to do it in here because I want this to kind of dry the way it is. So let me put some black in. Get what little yellow I've got left. There's not really See, what I can do with this one is take the black, drag it over. And this one I'll heat with the heat gun. So it didn't really do anything. So maybe I'll, it's, well it's start, it, it is kind of doing stuff over, on its own. I'll take some of this red and put it back on. Maybe a little blue. Swipe it again. So there's a little bit going on. So I'm going to try the dip one more time. That worked better. So it's doing some selling up a little bit. I've got a piece of cardboard. That's pretty right there the drips. So that's kind of interesting. Right there. So look at all those cells that popped up. So I can save this and I could make a 5 by 7 and frame it and it would be gorgeous. So this is something I'm going to save. Okay, I've let the canvas sit now for probably 15 minutes. I'm going to move it back over into the puddle. So for some strange reason, this did not sell up like I expected, which is interesting. We've got the big one here, a couple of them, the blues, and this big white and blue one here. There's not a whole lot I can do, so I'm going to take what's left in this cup, which is a little bit of the white and the blue. Now it's gray. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe this 
very gently. So I'll take a paper towel, stamp, Now we've got some sails. Not crazy about that area there. So this is pretty neat the way this is working out. So if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So I'm going to turn it. So just trying to kind of break up the surface tension there a little bit. I'm just curious if I drop red. Okay, I think I'm done. I'm going to put a little blue here where it's kind of thin. I kind of like a little bit of the blue at the bottom though. I don't know if I like the white. Um, Maybe I can stick a little. Oh, that's got some white in it, so it's gone pink. Put blue back over it. So here it is. Kind of neat with the gray area and everything. It looks interesting, I think. So, just kind of ad lib a little bit. When it doesn't work the way you want it to, just keep playing with it till you find something you like. So it kind of looks like charcoal at the bottom of the painting, you know, like charcoal embers, and then there's some flames or something. And a little blue sky at the top, I don't know. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.